What's up? I'm Hutch, and you need to understand vestibular treatments so that you can better help your patients and also pass the NPTE. As part of vestibular rehabilitation, you have positional treatments for things like BPPV, you have balance training, you have ocular motor training. Now this is the vestibular training. So this can occur in three different ways. The first way is called habituation. Basically, if your patient has a movement or a trigger that causes their symptoms to come on, you're going to force them to do that movement or expose them to that trigger until the body gets so used to it that it starts to tune out that stimulus and they no longer have those symptoms. This is used as a last resort because you're forcing your patient into very uncomfortable situations. But as with all of these strategies, you're gonna start really small and gradually get bigger as they adjust to that treatment. The second method is called adaptation. And this is mainly for the VOR, the vestibulo-ocular reflex. This involves practicing the VOR or the VOR cancellation with increasing speed, complexity, and range until it becomes automatic and they're able to be successful at it. So again, you'll wanna start really small, really small range of motion, really slow movements, really simple background, and gradually increase the difficulty. So you can change the background to something a little bit more complicated. You can have them do this in standing or while they're walking or while they're trying to balance. You can add a cognitive task while they're performing this. And all of those are both going to make this more challenging and more realistic for the patient, but also increase the longevity of your results. The third way is substitution with other strategies to change central programming. And there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You can look them up online, but I'll give you a couple of examples. So you can repeat oculomotor tests that were challenging. For patients that have trouble with saccades, you can hold up two sticky notes, one with an A and one with a B on it in front of them. You'll have the patient start by looking at A, they'll turn their eyes to B, and then they'll turn their head to B. And you'll have them repeat this until they're successful at it. For smooth pursuit, I have a couple different options. You can have the patient look at A, close their eyes, turn their eyes to B, then turn their head to B, and then open their eyes and see if they're correct. Or you can have them look at A, close their eyes, turn their head towards B, but leave their eyes on A, and then open their eyes to see if they're correct. To help a patient train their balance, you can decrease their visual or somatosensory input. So have them put on dark glasses, turn the lights off in the room, have them close their eyes. You could put them on a tilt board or a foam pad or on different surfaces like grass or cement or things like that. You can also have them practice the hip sway or the stepping strategy along with ball catches or perturbations to challenge them even more. Again, for all of these, you wanna start really small, slow and simple and increase the challenge as they master each step. Now it's time for NPTE Jeopardy. Pause the video now if you want time to read and think about the question. Otherwise, you've got five, four, three, two, one. This is the worst type of rehab because you're purposely making your patient sick. Again, only use this as a last resort. There are a lot of other things you can try first. Hopefully that covers all of our bases. If not, you can always check out the description box below for a link to my notes on Etsy, or you can comment with questions or suggestions for videos I should do in the future. Otherwise, good luck studying. Go change the world.